Hey, Dr. Clark. We're going to do an example video here for homogeneous linear systems. Let's take a look. So the goal is to solve a 2 by 2 homogeneous linear system. Here it's been written in uh, matrix vector notation, but of course the idea is that vector y is some uh, xy like so, and so you could think of this uh, derivative of y would be x prime y prime, and that would equal 2, 4, negative 6, negative 8 times xy, uh, which means it's really equivalent to this linear system 2x plus 4y equals x prime, and y prime equals negative 6x minus 8y. So what we're really looking for is some function x of t y of t that solve this system here and then satisfy the initial conditions where x is equal to 2 at 0 and y is equal to 3 at 0. And uh, But you can compactly write it in sort of this state notation, vector y equals xy. Okay, and the idea is to solve one of these uh, linear systems is it's all down to the properties of this matrix. If we can find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that matrix, that will uh, lead us to a solution. So let's take a look at that matrix. Let's, here, we'll copy it out. We'll paste it onto the next page here. And let's find the uh, eigen well, first, let's find the eigenvalues of the matrix. Okay, so to do that, we want to find the determinant of 2 minus lambda, 4, negative 6, negative 8 minus lambda, which is equal to 2 minus lambda, negative 8 minus lambda, minus 4 times negative 6. And this is equal to lambda squared plus 8 lambda minus 2 lambda minus 16 plus 24, which is equal to lambda squared plus 6 lambda plus 8. And that factors into lambda plus 2 lambda plus 4. Okay, so we've got a nice uh, factor. So lambda 1 is negative 2 and lambda 2 is negative 4. So we have our eigenvalues right there. Okay, so the next thing to do would be to find the corresponding eigenvectors. And remember what an eigenvector is, is typically when you multiply a matrix times a vector, that matrix will both rotate and stretch the vector. But an eigenvector has the property that it is not rotated, it is only stretched, and the stretch factors will be negative 2 and negative 4 in this case. Okay, so how do we uh, find the eigenvectors? Well, let's... Uh, let's Copy our matrix again. We'll paste it onto the next page. And the idea is there should be some xy where multiplying the matrix times xy is equal to, well, let's start with negative 2, the first eigenvalue, equals negative 2 times xy. So what we're saying here is matrix times vector is equal to the vector but stretched by negative 2. So it's not changing the direction and that's a special property. All right, so 2x plus 4y has to equal negative 2x and negative 6x minus 8y has to equal negative 2y. We've got ourselves two equations and two unknowns here. Uh, let's see, negative 6x and negative 6y equals 0. And what's interesting is both of these equations are essentially saying 
the same thing. They're saying that, well, you could pick x to be 1 and y to be negative 1. That will solve the first equation, but it will also solve the sec second equation. So the two equations are essentially linearly dependent. And the eigenvector is just any solution. So in uh, 1, negative 1 would be the simplest one, but you know, 2, negative 2, or 3, negative 3 would also work. Okay, and then let's find the other eigenvector. So we've got the matrix 2, 4, negative 6, negative 8, multiplied by the vector x, y, and this should equal the other eigenvalue, negative 4, times x, y. So again, multiplying the matrix times the vector is the same as multiplying negative 4 times the vector. So that vector is stretched, but not rotated. And this becomes the equation 2x plus 4y equals negative 4x, and negative 6x minus 8y equals negative 4y. Uh, if we Let's see, we get 6x plus 4y equals 0, or we get negative 6x uh, minus 4y equals, sorry, minus 4y equals 0. And of course, these two equations are saying the same thing, um, and we just need a solution. So maybe if I pick x equal to 2 and y equal to 3, that should work, or maybe 2, negative 3. Yeah, there we go. 2 times 6 is 12. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Um, and that'll make uh, both of these equations true. Okay, so that is uh, the second eigenvector. All right? And so then, with that in hand, we can write down the general solution to this uh, may, original problem right here. What is y of t? Uh, it's some vector function. You know, y of t is basically x of t, y of t in a vector. And it should equal uh, e to the eigenvalue times the eigenvector. So we're going to have c1 times e to the minus 2t times the eigenvector 1, negative 1, plus c2, e to the minus 4t, that's the second eigenvalue, times the corresponding eigenvector 2, negative 3, right there. So that is um, the general solution. Okay? And if you want, you could write this, you know, you could say, well, what's x of t? You could write it down as c1 e to the negative 2t plus c2 e to the negative 4t, uh, oh, times 2, sorry. Um, I have to put the 2 in there, plus 2 c2 e to the negative 4t, right? And you could say that y of t is um, negative c1 e to the negative 2t. Uh, minus 3c2 e to the negative 4t. If you want to think of it as a uh, system x and y, but you can more compactly write it in this vector version. Okay, and the last thing we need to do with this general solution is solve the initial value problem. So they gave us this initial condition. Let's copy that and paste it on the last page. And then let's take our solution here, copy that, and paste that on the next page. And then we just have to uh, solve it at t equals 0. So let's plug in 0. y of 0 will be... I think it'll just be uh, c1 times 1, negative 1, plus c2 times 2, negative 3. Okay? And that is supposed to equal 2, 3. And so we just get a uh, system of two equations and two unknowns. So c1 plus 2, c2 equals 2, and negative c1 
minus 3c2 equals 3. If we add these equations together, I get negative c2 equals 5. So c2 must be negative 5. And if c2 is negative 5, then c1 must be equal to 2 minus 2c2. Two uh, so that must be 12 then. So my solution to initial value problem, if I did this correctly, should be 12 e to the minus 2t times 1 negative 1 um, minus 5 e to the minus 4t times 2 minus 3 and if I plug in 0 I get let's see 12 minus 10 is 2 and then negative 12 plus 15 is 3 so yes that is in fact the solution to the initial value problem right there. So hopefully you found that helpful, uh, seeing how to take a matrix problem, find the eigenvalues, find the eigenvectors, write down the general solution, and then use the general solution to solve an initial value problem. All right, so we'll see you next time.